shoe. I mean, theoretically, everything about the shoe is the same, and it has the same shoe strings, same brand. It's not like I replaced one of the shoe strings or anything. Yet, my left shoe always comes untied. My guess is it must have something to do with how I walk. And maybe I step on this. I have to pursue that line of thinking a little bit more. Always, always, always growing. Oh, yeah. Well, and, uh, not to go into great detail, but this is a hip I broke. So, therefore, it's possible my leg is turned in, turned out. I definitely think this leg is shorter than the other one. Yeah, because they, you know, when they, like, screwed it back together. But that's not what we're here for. We're not here to discuss my medical issues. Okay, what is going on here? I think I have a dialog box. Yeah, behind a dialog box. Here we go. All right. Today we're going to look into more detail about the application. We covered two of the main things about this application. Number one, how it, we didn't cover how it remembers the searches, but we covered how it recalls them after it saves it. So we haven't talked about how it saves the, the, the uh, your Twitter searches, but we talked about after you have uh, done that how it recalls them, and it does it through the shared preferences. All right. And we talked about how it shows and hides the save FAB. Let's look at what happens when they press the save FAB, because the save FAB has um, a on-click listener of the save button listener. And if we look at that, it's done with the same technique of using an inner anonymous class. So we have on final on-click listener, save button, button listener equals new on-click listener, and we define the class right inside the activity. Excuse me. Um, we grab the two values from the query and from the tag. We are able to do that, again, just to verify, and this might be review for you or it might be intuitive, but we're able to do that because the two edit text fields are defined as instance variables for the activity, which means they are available throughout this class even inside the anonymous inner classes. So we grab the string uh, that contains the text for this. We grab uh, the string for the tag. We look to see if either of them are empty. Um, actually, like reverse logic, we, we see if both of them are not empty. I know that's, that's a little, little confusing, but that's what we do. And and if both of them are available, we hide the keyboard. That's what this line does. We call a method that says add tag search and give the tag in the query. We blank out the edit text. We blank out the uh, for, for the query and for the tag. And then we set focus back there. All right. So most of the action happens in add tag search. And we pass in a tag and a query. That method 
is right here. This is where we put it in to the saved preferences. All right? So we put it into the saved preferences and shared preferences, rather, by opening up an editor to the shared preferences. So we open up a shared preference editor. And we, we then put that tag and query into the preferences. And we then do an apply. So effectively, these three lines of code here, I'm thinking about a couple things at the same time. I, I apologize. These three lines here, what they do is they create an editor that's sort of a, a class whose job is to edit the shared preferences. We put this trigger there, and then we apply the changes. That's sort of like in database technology, doing an update and then, or an insert and then doing a commit. So the applying is what finally makes it so after we do that. What do you suppose this line does? If tags contains a tag, what is tags? Tags is an array list. Or actually a list. It's like an array list, all right, in Java, but it's a list that contains all the tags that were saved. However, that tag list, a tag list contains the tags that were there before this update had happened. Remember way early on in here, when we first load the page, We grab a new array list and we grab it by pulling from the save searches all the key sets. Remember, again, the shared preferences is, in, is expressed as a pair of keys and values. All right? So, keys and values. If we pull the key set, we're pulling all the keys. What are all the keys? All the tags. So that tags array list is formed by pulling out of the shared preferences all of the tags. All right? When we go and save a new tag, tags doesn't have that new tag yet. Well, it maybe doesn't have it yet. If it's truly a brand new tag, then it doesn't have that tag yet. And does tags contain tag will return, or does not tags contain tag, if it's not found in there, is considered to be a new tag. If it is contained in there, is considered an update. So, Let's watch and let's, let's try to figure out a little bit about the behavior of this application. Because if you see how the application behaves, it will, might make more sense to you. So let's go and run this. I'll go and run this. It's firing up. Pulling from the shared preferences. Creates an adapter. The ad adapter gets its data from the tags array list. And that tags array list gets 
extracted from the shared preferences. So in shared preferences, we have a CB and we have a CC. So Cleveland Browns and Cleveland Cavaliers. Let's say I click on this. I long click on it and I say I want to edit this. Up comes the query and the tag. Let's say I change the query to Cleveland Brown quarterback. and I hit save. What's going to happen is the tag of CB is going to be contained in our tag array list, right? Because it was there before. It was in the shared preferences. It got pulled into the tags array list. So I go and save it. It doesn't need to change anything in that listing, right? Because all I've done is edited a tag that was already there. So it doesn't need to change a list of tags because that tag was already there. Notice if I do this, though. If I change the tag, at this point, C. Browns is not in the tag list. So when I click on Save, it's going to see that tag is not in the tags list, and therefore it's going to add tag, that tag to the list and use that to populate this guy here. So I click Add, and there you go. All right, I have C. Browns, which is Cleveland Browns, and I have C. B., which is Cleveland Browns quarterback. Now, the implication of this is that you can't change a tag on something. Because if you change a tag, it considers it an insert. All right? Does that make sense? I don't know if I like that behavior or not, but you could argue that that's a feature, not a bug. All right? Because it does it that way on purpose. All right. So if you change the tag, if that tag isn't there, it will create a new tag for it. So it doesn't overwrite the old tag because the tag is used to identify it. So if I truly wanted to change a tag, I could always go and change the tag, insert the new one, then delete the old tag and change it that way. So that's sort of the workaround for that. At any rate, what happens... If that tag is not in there, well, again, it needs to add it to the array list. So we add it to the array list using that command. Tags is our array list. We add the new tag to it. We then sort the tag list because we want this tag list to always be sorted in alphabetical order. So if I want to do a search on Zellers, I make the tag Z, it puts it at the bottom. Whereas if I want to do a search on Adams, and I put an A, it's going to put it at the bottom, or at the top, or Heather. So it adds it to the array list, it sorts the array list, then it tells the adapter that something has changed. All right? And that will cause the adapter to go in and redraw the screen. What's the adapter consist of? Again, it says that the data comes from tags. This is the item click listener. This is the item long click listener. And then we added a new item divider to the um, to the um, to the to the recycler view. So that's what puts the little line between them. And interestingly enough, that item divider is actually a class. that actually
actually contains how to write and how to draw the item divider. One thing that we haven't looked at is we have not looked at how this actually gets drawn. We've defined the adapter, we've defined the separator, but we haven't looked at the code associated with the adapter that has the details about how to draw it. All right, now we'll look at that in a couple minutes. We've notified that the data changes and we've added it. All right, I think I skipped this. It should have been what I should what I started off with today. Because I talked last time, I think last time when we went over this, I have my search adapter. I think we got about this far. We set the adapter for the recycler view and we added the item decoration for it. But I don't think I talked about the details of that search adapter. So let's do that now. This would have been what I probably should have started with. Let's look at that search adapter. First of all, our constructor. Our constructor consists of three arguments. Those three arguments are what we used when we created that search adapter. search adapter, whatever the tag array list is gets stored as tags, the on click listener gets stored as the on click listener, and the long click listener gets stored as the long click listener here. So that's the constructor of the search adapter. Now, this code a search adapter has a view holder associated with it. And there's code that gets called when the view holder is created, when the view holder is And when the view holder, the data is bound. And this gets called repeatedly. This, this method over here gets called repeatedly. This configures the views, uh, the recycle views, 
view holder. This is a constructor for the view holder. It gets past the view, and that will be the recycler view itself. And it gets past the two um, the two um, listeners. Grab a pointer to the text view that is part of the item view. We find the thing in the item view that has an R ID of text view. corresponds to this ID here. in the view holder actually gets gets executed. I was confused for a second. But the code for the view holder gets executed for every line in the recycler view. Okay? So for every line in the recycler view, a view holder gets created. And that grabs a pointer to the text view field and that sets the click listener for that item. There's a couple of methods associated here. The get item count. This returns how many times this needs to happen. because this will happen once for every search that we're going to put in there. How do we know how many times we need to do this? How, many, how do we know how many lines we need to create in here? That's based on the size of that tags array. All right, That tags array, which was created originally in the main activity, and we've passed over to this view adapter contains a list of all the tags. All right. Therefore, the number of tags that are in there tells us how many times we have to go and create this. So, in this case, we have four. So what's going to happen is this code is going to execute four times. We're going to create four view holders for this. All right. One for each item. When we create that view holder, we are going to go and we are going to inflate the XML. What do I mean by inflating the XML? And in, the, in our case, it is our layout list item. Well, that's this XML here. This XML here contains just a single view, the text view. All right? And in fact, the ID of it is text view. All right? So it's going to take this and it's going to bring it to life. It's like dehydrating it, right? This is a description of the objects that are going to get created every time 
we create a new row in that list, in that recycler view. So, every time we create a row in that, we call on create view holder. We go and we inflate that XML. And we return a new view holder and call the click listener and log uh, and pass, pass the new view that we created, pass the click listener and long click listener. So that gets called every time. When we bind the data, what do we do? That's where we actually fill up the data in there. We grab the text view that's associated with that holder and set the tag according to the position. So the first time through the loop, the position is zero. So we set the first row in the recycler view with element zero from the tags array. Element 1, element 2, element 3. I recognize this is confusing. I think I got a little confusing through the description myself. All right. But the view holder is what controls creating the lines in the list view, creating the elements in the list view. So, when we create this adapter, it comes with a view holder class. And we implement what happens when the view holder gets created. Get item count says how many times we do this, how many view holders we create. On bind says for this given item, which one do we um, fill up? Where do we fill up the line from? And the constructor says every time we create a line, what do we do? We set the on click listener for it, and we grab a pointer to the text view. Remember, we are extending recycler view. So this already has some default behavior built into it as far as the sequencing of these things and how they work. So we're just overriding the methods that we need to override, such as we're adding a constructor. There already is a constructor. I'm sure the view holder gets called in the constructor for a recycler view adapter. But we've added a constructor that contains three arguments. That's the constructor that we added to the list here. We added what happens when we create a new item view in the recycler view. And finally, we added what happens when we bind the data to the new item that we created. One of the things that we need to supply too is the item count. So we have to supply how many items are in there. It's a little tricky. Probably would have to play with this to get the hand of it. But what this allows is this allows for a dynamic layout. And as is stated here, the recycler view and adapter it controls items that have scrolled off screen is handled for you.
So for example, how many of these can we show? I'll bet we could show five or six of them. We only need five or six of those objects in memory at a time. If you scroll off, then those views are going to get recycled, so they're going to get reused. So we're not taking up a whole bunch of memory for those. Questions on this? Let me find let me recycler views and adapters. memory. Exactly where it gets stored uh, on the device, I couldn't tell you. All right, but it, yeah, it's, it's, it's memory, persistent memory um, on there. Okay, let's look. This looks pretty good as far as a description of it. We can have a recycler view described there. We can have a custom row layout. So we have XML for the individual row in the layout. And then we have an adapter. The adapter's role is to convert an object at a position into a list row item to be inserted. However, within a recycler view, the adapter requires the existence of a view holder object, which describes and provides access to all the views within each item row. And they create the adapter. This constructor, the constructor on there is, const is called for each row. So it contains the an entire item row and does the view lookups to find each subview. So the constructor is what is called uh, when each row is created. When each row is created, one of the things that happens is we have to make the layout for that row. And we make that by inflating the layout in XML and pointing to the different, uh, pointing to uh, the, or, or creating the new um, row, the new view, the new view holder for that given row. On bind is where we fill the data in there. And finally, get item count is what returns the number of items. It's a little confusing to me again because the sequence in which the things occur. On create actually calls a constructor. So when we construct this, um, in the we call super item view, 
I'm sure that super item view probably calls the onCreate method, which creates a new view holder for each row. My guess is what gets called is a no argument constructor. And well, no, that doesn't make sense either. I'm a little confused about the arrangement of these things. The arrangement of the constructor and the on create. It's like the on create is what calls a constructor, but then what causes the What causes the creation of the object that calls the on create? But if I was trying to search for it, how wouldn't you I'm guessing the modified data set change to look at something on the adapter? Because on the adapter after you change the data, yeah. you're calling modified data set change. I would think that would somehow have to trigger that change. Well let's look that up. Yeah, that's because we call that in here when we say that notify data set because we don't specify any arguments, it assumes everything might have changed. Right. Yeah, they so, have ones that are more specific. Right. You can say like this region change. Right. Yeah, to do it that way. They have ones that say it's, it's something called notify item range insert. Mm -hmm. So, this is
is called right when the adapter is created. Oh. This is called This is called right when the met when it's when the adapter is created, it's used to additionalize, initialize your view holder. So, when the view holder is created, this gets called it inflates it. Yeah, this calls a constructor. There has to be somewhere in Recycler View Holder another constructor that gets called as part of the framework. Because who, who who creates the first object that can go and call the onCreate method? Only one constructor. Well, that's a good question. I'm not sure exactly the mechanics of how it flows, but we can we can make the observation that this is what's created, this is what's called for each row. All right, we grab a pointer to the text view, we grab a, uh, we set the two on click listeners. This is what actually creates the layout. And it does so by inflating one of our XML files. This is what actually sets the text of the, the label or whatever we have in there, the text field, and then this returns the number of items that it has to iterate through. The rest of what gets called in what sequence must be managed by the framework and um, well, it's not obvious to me how that happens. It's probably something we don't need to be concerned about. It'd probably be good if we knew it, but we can get this to work without understanding exactly how the framework does its thing. Any questions? All right, that's all I had for today. Mike, I had a question, but a comment. Um, the syllabus, week four, we were going to do tip calculator. Yes. So I was a little unprepared. Um, oh, that's okay. Next week is week five. Right. That's okay. Uh, the class tends to, you know, go a little faster and slower depending on that. So okay. yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be too concerned. For some reason I thought you wrote this. <laughs> I, and then I looked at the examples and I was like, no, he didn't write this. This is the Gradle example. Didn't write this application? Yeah. No, I did not write this application. This is from Deedle. I was a little lost on Tuesday. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Got it. I'm back in. Okay. Good. By the way, you